Namaskaram. So today I'm going to show you the art. It's very interesting because it is not only the art between art of the individuals who are deeply in love with each other but also transcended all boundaries through something called the powerful emotion of devotion. So as the story goes, Krishna was in Vrindavan. He was deeply in love with Radhe. And uh, he used to sing and dance with her and all the other gopis as well. And he was quite happy with everything. No concern for the future, no planning whatsoever. And that was the reality what he has thought about it. But soon the envoy from Mathura comes and then he is asked to leave his past behind. And he is told that he is not actually the son of whom he thought was. So he wants to reflect what is going on in his life. So he moves to the Govardhan mountain. <laughs> so this story is narrated according to what Sadhguru mentions about the story of Krishna. So he goes to the top of the Govardhan hill and he reflects on in this new existence. He was just enjoying his life, going around in the village, not much to do. Just look after the cattle and just enjoy in the village life. But now he's told that he's a He's a prince and he has a destiny to fulfill. So he goes to the top of the hill and he reflects everything and what he said is like it was his moment of his enlightenment. So he realized why he was there, what was all this about and everything. And he comes down the hill after a few hours. They said everyone who knew about him, they bow down to him. So the person who was going towards the top of the hill and coming down was not the same. So <coughs> for Krishna, it was quite easy for him to let go of everything. He was a Vairagi afterwards, anyways. But uh, he now had to meet Radha for one last time and he is deeply concerned because Radha is someone who is deeply in love with him and uh, she's in such a condition that she actually values Krishna more than her own well-being and her life. So here this art depicts the encounter, the final encounter between the Radha and Krishna after this which <coughs> they never met. So what actually happens is the Krishna comes to Radha and tell, gives her his flute, the flute that can mesmerize everyone and everything in the universe. Krishna is an enchanter. So he says that now my old life is now over. So this Krishna is never going to play the flute again. And since this Krishna cannot play the flute again anymore, this Krishna cannot stay with you either because of the responsibilities and everything. Now I have to leave. 
So I'm going to give you my this flute so that you can play the flute now. Now you are the Krishna in the Vrindavan. No flute for me. So, but what actually happened is quite opposite to the Krishna's expectation. Something miraculous happens. What actually happens is Radha is now in full ecstasy. So initially, before this moment, what actually happened was Radha was separate, Krishna was separate, at least in her experience. So for her, Krishna was someone who used to come to meet her every time and everything. But at this moment, what actually happened is, it was not only the moment of enlightenment for the Krishna, but the moment of enlightenment for Radha as well. So she was in full ecstasy. Full in ecstasy in such a way that she merged with Krishna consciousness and she lost her own identity. Before, she used to think about when Krishna would come and play the flute for him, for her. But now, she was in ecstasy. So, at that time, this art is depicting that when Krishna is about to live, he is in full awareness. He knows that he is never going to see her back again. And it was the farewell for him, from his side at least. But Radha didn't actually hear what Krishna was saying. She was in such a state that she transcended all her boundaries. Into our physical, mental, emotional, everything. And her attraction towards this cowherd boy was transcended and she was in complete devotion now. Wherever she saw, she could only see, feel and hear Krishna. Krishna was no longer a physical body for her. So what this image depicts is the flute that she is holding on. Now she has merged with the Krishna completely. She has now attained. And the tree and then the ground, all the leaves and everything has now become flowers, different colors of flowers. They start falling down. So this is uh, basically the metaphor. And as you can see, as Krishna starts living, towards the chariot where his brother and the other person who is going to escort him to Mathura. They are waiting for him. He's completely aware and he's living with pain and excruciating pain because he knows he's living behind someone who was his everything before this realization dawned to him. But Radha, completely drenched in the ecstasy, she has transcended herself. And now she does not seek Krishna physically. And she does not need to seek Krishna physically as well. So this is uh, quite a fascinating art I'm drawing. The story behind it is quite extraordinary. And this is typically a little bit different version of the story that most of the people might have heard most of the time. This is what actually must have happened. Because uh, there is another story, uh, hopefully, like I'm going to draw that picture as well. So, Uddhava was the Krishna's cousin. So, once the Krishna became the king in 
Mathura. So he could he never went back to Vrindavan. So he sent his cousin brother Uddhav Uddhava to meet the Radha and see like what his gopis and all the kings were doing. So he sends them. But at the same time Uddhava was a Jnana Yogi. So he thought that like uh, all the knowledge and then the Brahma Gyan, whatever it says. So that is superior to everything and he does not need to learn or do anything else. So that was his idea. So when Uddhava reaches to the Brindavan and sees everybody's crying, they were all the gopis were yearning for Krishna. And they meet, goes and goes to the Radha and then says that, why you are crying? You're crying for the God and everything. But to the mesmerization, Radha shows Uddhava that Krishna has never left. So this was the power of devotion. So as you can see in this picture, it is depicted that as the Krishna lives in pain, Radha is in ecstasy and the entire existence, at least the tree on which she is sitting, is full of bliss and flowering all over the place. Thank you.